Hi everyone. Welcome to our SIGUX webinar, Adventures in Management Incentives, Incentives with a Flair. Uh, I'd like to welcome Teresa Morgan and Carla Hoskins. They will be facilitating this session for us. Teresa has worked in customer service positions her entire career, with the majority being spent at Purdue University. And Carla is the administrative and scheduling supervisor there for the last six years. They both love working with students and collaborating with their student leadership team. Now, before we jump in, I just want to let everyone know you are, by default, muted, and that just helps with getting rid of any unwanted background noise. But we do want this to be interactive as possible, so if you have any questions, just feel free to chat those in to me, and I will let Teresa and Carla know that there's a question out there. So just to make sure you know how to use the technology, can everyone go ahead and say hi or say something fun about what's going on today? Hey, Andrea. Anybody else? Anybody else know how to use the question tool? All righty. Well, thank you all very much. So with that, Teresa and Carla, I turn it over to you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar about the development of our student incentives program that we call Pincentives. Uh, my name's Carla, and I've been at Purdue for about 20 years leading the ITAP lab team. We uh, manage about 40 computer labs on campus with um, around 120 student employees. And I am Teresa Morgan. Uh, I have been at Purdue over 21 years and so in my current position for about four years with supervising students. I presented a lightning talk at SIGUS last November on our incentives program that we call PINCENTIVES and we're going to delve a little deeper into the program today. So for our agenda, we'll cover the motivations behind our consensus program, the development of the program, some roadblocks that we encountered, and the benefits. So we'll get started. When I first started at ITAP, I had to kind of change my way of thinking and supervising in order to work with student employees. In my previous role at Purdue, I supervised up to 20 full-time employees. And I quickly learned there are big differences in these roles, um, as well as big differences in staff motivations. So for full disclosure, I'll note I worked in a very dysfunctional area before coming to ITAP. Uh, Carla can attest to this. She also worked there briefly. I believe you call it your worst job ever. Yes. So, you know, that's always a positive um, feedback there. Uh, but we regularly did have crying employees, 12 to 14 hour work days, poor evaluation methods when it did happen, and more. So uh, about five years before I moved roles to ITAP, the HR department decided to get some feedback from employees with anonymous questionnaires. You can imagine the results weren't great. We even had an employee comparing the workplace to Auschwitz, which really is never a comparable situation to a bad workplace, but gives you the gist of the environment. It does also illustrate the big difference between full-time and student employees. Now, as full-time staff, we're motivated by wages, benefits, retirement, and so on, you know, security for ourselves and family. Motivations that can keep us in positions or workplaces that are less than ideal. Most student employees don't have these worries yet. They have uh, classes as their priority, as it should be. They do need a paycheck for support, but they want a job that's flexible for their classes uh, to help with organizations, commitments, and many have the flexibility to leave a job if it isn't working out right, or maybe they just want to pursue something different. We are all juggling a lot of roles in our lives whether it is work, school, family, clubs. Our students also deal with increased stresses that lead to a lot of concerning statistics. And we have encountered that ourselves just dealing with our student staff. I meet with four to five students a semester who request assistance with work due to mental health related issues, either needing some time off or uh, just needing someone to talk to to have that support. The good news to kind of counteract these statistics is that studies have shown a part-time job with the right support can help combat a lot of them. It helps with increased engagement in school, work, and relationships. 
A job can give students another support system to help them deal with issues and help keep them at school. It's another big difference when you're working with student employees. You are more than just a supervisor. We have jobs that need to be done, but we are also in teaching roles, from helping navigate new stress of college to maybe new workplace conflicts that they've never had to deal with before. That's a lot to take on, so where do you start? For us, we started at the very beginning to see where we could add incentives to create a better workplace. The beginning being our new higher training sessions. If any of you have had to present lengthy training materials, you may recognize these faces and feel like your audience is hearing We knew we wanted to make adjustments in this process along with our student leadership roles, but needed to learn what students wanted to see in these areas. That led to our first feedback survey. I created a survey with a wide range of topics, questions on training, job satisfaction, promotion opportunities, as well as questions about full-time staff, myself and Carla included, and our student leadership team members. Sometimes there are no changes that can be made, and the only recourse is, as Maya Angelou said, to change your attitude. But we were ready to make changes that would help better our student employees and our customer service to campus. We got some great ideas from students for changes to uh, new hiring, new hire training, and some good comments about jobs and staff. But we also received feedback that was definitely not pretty. It was difficult, but it was necessary for us to see where we were losing students as far as engagement in their jobs and motivation to take on new roles. You can see we've got some comments here that were really hard to hear, um, especially some of the information like negative performance reports, will I be fired? You know, we try to make sure everybody knows the intent of our tools here, so to find out that was getting lost on students was pretty upsetting. And if we hear that they felt like there were no opportunities for advancement, again, we tried to promote that a lot. And a lot of the feedback, that was what we were hearing, is that they were only getting negative reports. They never heard when they did something right, only when things were done wrong. You know, we would go over during orientation, the performance reports aren't personal. They're just intended to help you improve on your job, let you know maybe you missed filling a printer here. But that wasn't what the students were hearing or what they were getting from the reports. They felt like everything was negative, nothing instructional or positive. Our lab assistants, or LAs, work predominantly on their own in our computer labs across campus. They assist customers, maintain the printers and computers, keep the lab clean, and ensure a safe environment for the campus community. It's an important role, but one that can be taken for granted. Our senior lab assistants, or SLAs, help supervise the lab assistants and generally write the majority of the performance reports, the main source of feedback for LAs. Another incredibly important role yet at the time we began Pincentives, we were struggling to find students interested in taking on the SLA leadership role. We needed to address how our senior lab assistants were working as well as training and support they were given. We increased the number of SLAs on the team to decrease the workload that each team member had. We also revamped our SLA interview and training process so they were more prepared for the demands of the position. We also needed to find ways to show all of our student staff that we appreciate the work they do for us and bring more positivity to our workplace. Change needs to start from the top down, so we began looking at ways we could encourage our employees, show that we valued their contributions, and offer new benefits to taking on more within the department. And that was how Pincentives started. Pins plus incentives for Pincentives. We require all of our employees to wear a lanyard and ID badge while on duty, so they're easily identifiable for our customers. We thought a fun way to recognize great work and personal achievements would be with flair for the lanyards. Pins awarded for achievements like great customer service, perfect attendance, or helping a supervisor. You can see some of our pins here, from the customer service superstar to the you're a big old jar of awesome sauce for our SLAs.
the important thing when we rolled out the flare was that everyone understood the purpose, that it's recognition for work and achievements. We wanted this to be a positive form of recognition, not a chore that you have to add this flare to your lanyard. Yet we didn't want our employees to feel like this was just one more thing they had to do. They already have to wear the lanyard, they've got the ID badge, now we have to wear these pins. We needed to make sure they understood that this was a way to recognize their efforts. We kicked off the program at a pre-semester meeting for all of our staff where we handed out new lanyards for everyone. We showed off the pins, let them know what each pin um, could be achieved for, um, and we had senior staff already wearing their promotion pins to get the ball rolling so we could see staff wearing them and get people excited about it. We also always follow up on all pin awards with email feedback or in-person visit. They can come to the office to pick them up, and we do have some, um, like our Good Egg Awards, for receiving 28 or more positive reports in a semester that come with additional rewards like candy bars. We started with just a few pins, but that has grown to nearly 30 possible pins now, and a number have been designed by our students. We continue to grow with new categories and designs for multiple flare winners, as we've had a number who have had really good customer service, so we have to keep designing new pins so they can keep receiving that recognition. So now we needed to get all the staff on board. We had to retrain our leadership team. We didn't want them to visit the LAs and the labs just to look for what was wrong. Yes, we need the LAs to do their jobs well to provide customer service, but we need the visits to be about engaging the LAs in their jobs, asking questions, helping with training, seeking out opportunities to help the LA in the job, and then following up with a performance report. The performance reports are meant to be training tools to help LAs know what they are doing right and what needs work. The LAs don't have direct supervision during their shifts, so the visits and reports help provide needed feedback. We just needed our SLAs to change their way of thinking. We would hear from SLAs, well, I didn't write more reports because the LAs I visited did everything right. Hey, that's when a report acknowledging that effort would be a great encouragement. We ran into some trouble with some of the SLAs who had been team members for a while. They had trouble adjusting to the new way we wanted to approach feedback. Negative issues in the lab still needed to be addressed, but they needed to be discussed in person with a follow-up report. The majority of the team on, with the majority of the team on board following group and individual meetings, but we did have some team members return to the LA role or leave the group entirely. This was unfortunate, but we had to keep the big picture in mind. And positive work needed to be addressed too. It's hard for anyone to stay motivated in a job if you only hear about what you're doing wrong. It's also hard to get staff motivated to take on more leadership roles if they feel inadequate in their current role. And that is the bigger and uh, really more valuable purpose of our consensus program, making employees feel valued, making employees feel gratitude for their job and their job purpose, helping them become engaged in their work, knowing they're making a difference here on campus for the entire community, helping them develop some friendships with peers, become better team players, and step up to be leaders in the department. This equals added value for us. The more they're involved and become more motivated employees, well, it also offers the students the chance to develop new skills, from supervision to communication to program development. Our CIO, Jerry McCartney, really stresses the importance of developing friendships at work to help the job be more than a job, a place you really enjoy being with people and people you really enjoy being around. As full-time staff, we spend most of our waking hours at work, so why not enjoy that time if you can? And we wanted to have that same environment for our students. Positive work cultures and workplace friendships have shown a lot of benefits in recent studies. A Gallup poll from this past March shows um, employees with a good friend at their workplace are seven times more likely to be fully engaged in their work. It also shows that close friendships at work increase employee satisfaction by 50%. We developed activities for our students to help them meet other team members, which was really important. Um, most of our LAs work on their own in the labs. So we had a wide range of events from scavenger hunts to game nights and cookouts to give them a chance to meet other staff members 
that normally they wouldn't have the chance to interact with. We also have stress-busting activities during dead week, the week before finals week in the semester, and finals week, where we do curlers, uh, movie nights, coloring books. We also have free coffee, tea, or hot chocolate for our staff. That's morning to night during both of those weeks, and that's really popular, especially the coffee. For the end of the fall semester, we also do holiday treat bags for everyone and gift bag raffles at both semesters. We have a incentives committee that's made up of student employees that includes employees from lab assistants all the way up to our admin senior lab assistants so that we have input from all areas to help plan activities and events. Getting the students involved in the planning was key because we really needed to have leadership in there to help with student buy-in. And no, we aren't promoting this pumpkin painting as a way for you to get additional training. There are some people that are always going to be suspicious. It's just free. It's just fun. Come and enjoy that with us. We also have a token shop. Students earn tokens when they receive a new pin, get performance, positive performance report tasks, work opening shifts, because those are always hard to fill, have perfect attendance, and in other situations like great showing great customer service. Their tokens accumulate for their career with ITAP. These tokens can be used to purchase items in our token shop. Items include snacks, coloring books, hats, socks, stickers, gift cards, and more. We post weekly updates to totals and keep an online token shop on our Confluence site so students can see what is available. Many will store up their tokens for big ticket items. It's become a fun way for students to be involved in tracking their feedback and job performance. The big thing I think when you're starting a new program is not to be afraid to take chances with the events or changes. I've been really lucky working with Carla is that we've been a great team and I can bring different ideas to her and we talk things out and usually it's um, the answer is go for it and see what happens and it's been really free for us to be able to kind of take these chances and see what students are going to engage with and what they're really not interested in. Have we had events where only two students show up? Yeah, and that's not fun. But have we also had events where 40 students show up? Yeah. And having that student input into the events really helps direct us to what types of activities we try. Not everyone's a winner, but, you know, everybody has different interests and they all have different schedules. So sometimes it can be just a matter of bad timing. Maybe we didn't promote the event enough. Maybe we didn't start early enough. We try to track all the events in attendance to see where the issues may be. We get feedback from staff just to figure out, you know, was it a matter of bad timing or was it just people aren't interested in the type of event we were planning. And it is tough sometimes not to have the turnout because our student leadership team does help us in these and they devote time and energy just like we do. And it's a little hard to see the low turnout because they're excited about things, but we do try to use it as a learning tool and see where we can go from here to improve it. And I'm also not above posting announcements and emails that may have a hint of a kill trip. I have a lot of experience with that. What was unexpected with devel developing Pincinives, though, was the natural way it led to other important changes in our department. As we switched our way of thinking to a more positive one, more carrot, less stick, we got increased interest from our employees in doing more in their roles. Students were coming up to us with suggestions for events, ideas for improving training, ways to better communicate, and so much more. One of the first big changes we did was eliminate our old paper manual in favor of a new Confluence site. The site's easily searchable. It allows us to keep policies and procedures current instead of having you know, an out-of-date manual because we've made a change to something during the semester. We're able to announce changes easily. We have an announcements reminders blog that students do have to check every shift. We've created training spaces. We have um, training videos. We have an LA homepage where they can easily find the tools they need to be using during their shifts. And we have areas for our leadership team and specialized lab teams. Like our Hicks team that works in one of our library areas in a collaboration space. Uh, we have their own separate Hicks Confluence page. And we've also added ITAP Twitter feeds and a calendar now. So we can add events and activities to the calendar. 
We also have any um, upcoming events that the admins are involved in. So if Carla and I are at a conference, we have that information on there. And we have just created our own Twitter and um, Snapchat accounts that we'll get on there along with our Facebook page. We got inspired from the recent LaSia conference we went to, and so we're trying to get a little more active with social media there as well. We added a new instant messaging tool, HipChat, that allows our LAs to ask questions and get quick answers for customer issues or equipment problems in the lab. We continue to add room, rooms as needed, such as a training room for LAs where access is limited to new trainees and the leadership team. This helps new staff feel comfortable asking questions without fear others might be judging. We also have a free parking room where students can chat about events, plan activities, post gifts, and have some non-work related chatter. We wouldn't be able to maintain any of this though without our student leadership team, especially the new pieces, positions we developed, the Administrative Senior Lab Assistant, or ASLA, and the Technical Senior Lab Assistant, or TSLA. When we changed the role of SLA, we added new expectations for the position. And that may seem the opposite of what you would want to do when you're having trouble filling open slots. But it was exactly what we needed. We had students who wanted the chance to do more, but didn't know how. When we offer these chances, come to us with ideas. Come to us if you have something you want to see in training. We had great student leaders step up. The first position, the ASLA, helped us redevelop our new employee training and our onboarding process, as well as our SLA training. I honestly could not do my job without this team. Every time one of these amazing students graduates, we think there won't be another Emily. And there won't, but there will be an awesome Shelby, an awesome Chris, or great Monica as we see new leaders step up and help us redefine the role. Having the ASLAs assist with new LA training saw an immediate impact. Students were more comfortable working with other students, even if they were in a supervisory role. They asked more questions and made connections immediately. We saw a, rate, a marked improvement in their retention of information and especially in the lab processes that they would take on in the day-to-day -day duties. Technical difficulties, sorry. And they also have helped us make the leadership team really a team, instead of just students who happen to work at the same position at the same time. Their efforts enabled us to eliminate a second shift full-time position, and they continue to develop their roles. The past semester, they took on interviewing new LA candidates for me, which is a really time-consuming but super important task. And this summer, they have a list of projects from creating training videos, to the new social media manager, to LA training quizzes. They've stepped up to help me with so many projects and just day-to-day -day tasks that help make my job easier and more productive and more focused on things that really only I can handle. Each, each team member has unique talents and abilities and is eager to help out. We have new tools that make everyone's job easier thanks to our students. We developed a technical SLA position because we had student volunteers to help with projects where they thought they could make a difference, like the new key inventory tool that our TSLA Manny developed. Manny also created a new performance report tool. Here's the old version, a Qualtrics survey that wasn't hard for the SLAs to complete, but sent out output to the staff that wasn't great. There was a number system to know what was positive or negative task and students reported they skipped to the bottom to report to the bottom of the report for the additional comments. Manny changed that with our new tool. The feedback on the new report was unanimously positive. Manny is currently working on a new attendance reporting tool that will automate our email responses, assigning attendance points that will save Teresa a lot of time. For all of this work, Teresa nominated Manny for the Purdue Student Employee of the Year Award from SIA, which he won this past April, so we're pretty proud of him and his achievements. Part of the award also included the t-shirt that Manny oh, was wearing. <laughs> that he, I think he was more excited about that than he was about yeah, the t-shirt. <laughs> He's a big Deadpool fan. Yeah. Um, we also have 
a lab station cleaning tool that was developed by our, by our ASLA Chris, who wanted to create a solution to the problem of how can we enforce LAs cleaning a certain number of stations per shift. And we have a sign switching tool that was brought to us by a student who was in LA at the time. Uh, he developed this to help LAs keep track of needed event sign changes in the labs. And he brought this to us because he thought it might be helpful to um, the whole team. And it also gives our leadership team the ability to follow up with staff easily to make sure the sign changes are happening. And that student, Riley, is now a TSLA also. These were all voluntary projects that staff saw the need, saw where they could make changes that would help, and let us know they were willing to do the work. We have seen such a difference in our staff since the start of our incentives program. We've seen the number of negative issues reported in our performance reports decrease by 72%, and meetings with students for performance-related issues has decreased by nearly 91%. Our students want to join the leadership team now or work in the specialized library labs. We actually now have to turn away students and from the um, promotion interview process because we have so many people interested and moving into leadership roles. They see the important roles our student leaders have in the organization, see the differences they can make, and the impact they can have, and they want to be a part of that. And we want to continue helping them develop as leaders through additional training opportunities, resources, and the chance to use a wide variety of skills that they all have. The majority of our student staff stay with us until they graduate, which is something we are truly grateful for in our roles. We continue to do feedback surveys each semester that cover a wide range of topics still to ensure we are going in the right direction. Sometimes it can be about a new policy. Uh, sometimes it can be questions about incentives. What do you want to see next semester? What types of events? How did you like these? You know, it, it can be a lot of different things. And sometimes it's questions that our leadership team brings to us. How can we add this to the survey to see what students are thinking? We still discover some things to work on. And that's a good thing. You know, we need to know what's the problem. We can't fix it if we don't know it's broken. But overall, the feedback brings a lot of cost positive comments that let us know we're on the right track. And we continue to look for new ways to encourage and engage our students, from personal thank you emails, noting the great work someone's doing, to a birthday greeting and a free candy bar, uh, to attending lavender graduation celebrations for our students, or baking 130 cake pops for National Student Appreciation Week, and then decorating them with the help of our student leadership team, thank goodness. Uh, this was our third year celebrating National Student Employee Appreciation Week, and we had different events. We had cups with candies and goodies, and we had prize drawings. We're hoping to get other areas on campus involved next year so we can really expand the events and expand the reach that it has. Our goal is to support our student staff. Sometimes the lessons aren't fun. It may be learning about the consequences of missing set goals or having too many attendance points. But we are here to help them learn, just as we learn from them. So we talked a lot about the benefits from our incentives program, the new roles and opportunities we've created for our students. But there are some drawbacks. Basically, time and money. It does take time to help plan events or to come in after hours, you know, to attend events, to make food, bake 130 cake pops. But the time really is less a drawback than an investment with a really high return. Money is another concern, though. Uh, Carla and I pay for all of the events. Carla actually budgets a certain amount of money each month to help spend on the events and to buy items for token shop gift cards, graduation gifts for our leadership team, gift bags, and so on. We've been fortunate enough to have some of our management team help out with funds, but the majority of it is on us. Unfortunately, we are not allowed to seek outside business donations, so we do have to get creative with what we can do, and that kind of helps stretch our dollars, and it gets the students even more involved because they do come up with some fun events and ideas because you know most of them are on pretty strict budgets as well. 
And luckily, they do like homemade treats and home-cooked meals. Any drawbacks really can't touch the feeling you get when you receive an email or your card when someone graduates, like this one that we got from Mason, that lets you know the time and the effort that you're putting in really do make a difference. We won't reach every student in this way, and we know that, but we'll still have some that are grateful for free cookies, but just want to work their shifts and call it a day. That's okay, but we are having students like this that our positions here are making an impact for them, not just in their work, but in their lives going forward. And they let us know they're grateful to have the opportunities we provide. And we, you know, we'll continue to try to wear down those uh, naysayers and those people that just stop for the free cookies. We'll keep trying to wear them down. So here's a short video that one of our ASLAs, Shelby, sent us where she talks about her role and incentives. Hi, my name is Shelby. I am an admin senior lab person here at ITAP. I've been working here for about two years. And I have to say one of my favorite things about the job is, no doubt, my bosses. They're so understanding and amazing, and especially being in the office for the past year or so, working with them side by side, I'm just seeing how, in general, great they can be, especially with students, with students' schedules, with students' personal lives, their understanding. Honestly, everything you could want in a boss is exactly what they are. Uh, we have this program called Incentives that they came up with. Um, it's an incentive-based program where basically our employees can earn tokens that they can spend in the token shop. And they earn these tokens by getting positive performance reports, you know, generally doing good work. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think the program is a great idea. I actually manage a small part of it. I take pictures of the items that we put in our token shop that the students can purchase with their tokens. <clears throat> um, uh, really, the admins put so much hard work into it, just buying the stuff for the token shop and coming up with ideas and anything else we do with consensus. We also do events, you know, people can come and watch movies, take breaks, you know, play with Bob. We have good times at these events. Um, I wish more of our employees appreciated them, like I do, but, you know, we're probably just going to get the word out there a little bit more. Uh, mostly, consensus, I think. It just makes our it makes our it makes our employees feel appreciated. At least it makes me feel appreciated. You know, my bosses are just putting in all this hard work just to show us that the work we do matters, and I think that's really important. I paused that on purpose just so Carla would laugh because this made her cry the first time. <laughs> it wasn't a technical glitch on my part at all. <laughs> So where will Pincetives take us next? We're ready to test out new programs, like weekly lunches in the fall, looking for ways to work with other departments. Um, we have a new student employment office that we're hoping we can work with, as well as the Leadership Development Institute here, so we can expand opportunities for our staff. We want to continue to create new technical training options, research possible student internship positions, and more. So we'll keep working with our students to see where their ideas take us. And we'll just know we'll do it all with some flair. Thank you, everyone. That's uh, the end of what we have prepared for you. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, hey, Teresa and Carla, it's Beth. Sorry, I was on mute. I was talking. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I was just curious, how many LAs do you have in total? I mean, it's, it's constantly fluctuating. Yeah. Sure. Probably 60 to 70, with the rest being in different leadership positions, I think. So are the, and then how many SLAs and, a, uh, I'm sorry, now I guess it's ALAs and TLAs? <laughs> um, right now we have 12 ASLAs, 4 technical SLAs, and then I think we have 16 senior lab assistants. And then we also have and some staff that work in the um, library area that it's more customer service focused position. 
And I guess I just have a logistics question because I used to do kind of exactly what you're doing and it truly was always a challenge. How do you train and get feedback to and from the students that are working in the remote lab? So are the, your, I'm just going to say SLA for simplicity's sake, do the SLAs, do they go like on every shift? Are they responsible to go through the labs and is that where they provide the performance reports or is it a certain amount over a period of time? They do. They are required to visit um, the labs. We have our labs broken down into zones, so each of the SLAs working will take certain areas, and they will visit the lab, check in with the LA, you know, make sure everything's going well, and then they are required to write a certain number of reports per week. Got it. And the, the report is the performance feedback? Right, yes, the performance report. Mm -hmm. So it's, is it up to them, like, when they go out and about? Or do you always have like a, a senior person that's available to your lab assistants, even in the you know extended hours? There should be someone always available. Other than we do have a few labs that are open 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. where we don't have um, leadership teams or senior student staff. But other than that, we have either an ASLA and ASLA on duty, but we always have someone else working here. And I guess the last question that I'll ask anyway, um, I, I think to your point, it's always difficult to give uh, constructive feedback. So I was curious how did I mean, and, and I think you alluded to the fact that some of your SLAs thought they could or, you know, couldn't do that or didn't want to do that. So they chose a different path. But is the idea that they give, you know, they go into a lab, they see what the um, LA is doing and then right then and there they provide kind of immediate feedback whether good or bad and then follow it up with the paperwork? Yes. Yeah, we don't want to have any surprises. You know, just like a full-time staff, your annual reviews or whether quarterly, whatever it might be, they should be talking to the staff member and letting them know if there is an issue and, and that was I think some of the problems we ran into too with some of the staff that left. They didn't want to take on that more of a training aspect of it because that really is what it, you know, when you see a problem and you're talking staff member through it, you're training them so they can avoid it in the future. And they wanted to just be able to leave the lab and send a negative report, which isn't helpful to that student and makes them feel like, you know, it really is a way to kind of just tattle on them, let them know what's going on, you know, what people were doing wrong instead of it being the training method that we wanted it to be. Great, thank you. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any questions, but Andrea just said, uh, just a comment, very inspiring presentation, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Does anyone else out there have any questions? I must admit, I found it inspiring as well. And what I love was that you started at one place with the pins and then it really expanded from that. I think so hard, right? You want to have a full program before you start anything, but I loved your approach. Thank you. I guess we're kind of curious if other areas are celebrating like National Student Employee Appreciation Week or if they have any idea of what their process is for that. If anybody wanted to talk about that too, we'd be interested. Just uh, chat right in, guys, if anybody else is celebrating. A student Employee Appreciation Week. Uh, when is it? It is in April. It's usually around mid-April each, each year. Well, I'm just going to guess by the lack of response that perhaps no one else is celebrating in it, at least those who are on this webinar, in quite the same way you are. Oh, wait, Michelle does celebrate. They have lunches and small games events hosted for all student employees across campus. And then Casey says that our library does a student appreciation day that we piggyback on too, and they have pizza and snacks. Oh, nice. And then Casey also does a event once at the end of each semester. That's great, awesome. Uh, Michelle, they have a picnic at the end of every semester for the IT department? We have that for our full-time staff. And one, at the end of one semester, it's for just full-time and then at the end of another semester, students are invited. So are students always invited to your IT picnic? Again, a question for the group. Are students always invited to your picnics? 
you know, I know just speaking from where I'm at right now, we have a challenging time because usually if we do an IT, you know, team builder or town hall meeting is what we call them, then we often rely on our student staff to hold down the fort so that the full-timers can go. So, um, but that is during business hours typically, and I'm working at a state, you know, large state institution. Um, Michelle, they have a student-specific picnic and then start, are starting to incorporate student staff in some, or some of their ITL meetings. And okay. Andrew says yes for their annual ITS picnic lunch. And they've, yep, yeah, we've moved from abandoning them in recent years. So it does seem like there are some folks that are out there doing something similar to what you're doing. Uh, Shannon says they choose a theme each year and have snacks available uh, each day during that week. And then on Friday, they have a tea and cake party to celebrate the end of the semester and graduating seniors. And they also do door prizes during the party. Nice. So it like, looks like a lot of our attendees are really taking that time to recognize at least at the end of each semester or the end of a year, some kind of celebration for our student staff. And then others are taking it a bit farther to do things in between just as you're doing. Mm -hmm. Although, if I understood it correctly, you're, are you, when you said budget, are you funding it from your own pocket, or is there just a small budget set aside for this? That's, that's our own pocket. Car Carla just has a budget yeah. of her own where she, yeah, so we, we pretty much fund them. I'd say nearly 100% of it. We've gotten a few donations from management, but pretty much us. Yeah, that's a challenge. That's always a challenge, isn't it, to help get others to support these wonderful ideas? It's worth it, though. It is, yeah. Well, I think we are right at the uh, time limit for our webinar. Any last questions or uh, comments before we go ahead and and uh, and end our webinar? All righty. Well, I know Teresa and Carla, I feel inspired. I feel a little bit more peaceful and excited going into the rest of my day knowing what you're doing with your student employees. So thank you for the color, the joy, and the inspiration. Well, thank you very much. Great. Thank you. All righty. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. You too.